Hey guys, it is um, Saturday, November 30th. Bitcoin is at 96,700. And this episode is going to be about the future of Bitcoin financial services. So I think I wanted to step back a little bit and talk about this enormous part of the economy, which is financial services, right? We have, we have banking, bank branches, we have lending, we have wealth management, uh, we have brokerage businesses. We have this enormous complex of uh, the U.S. economy and, and most economies, Europe, China, Japan, uh, that really is finance, that is counting money, moving money, changing various forms of money and changing its various forms of investment. And I want to make, take a crack at saying, how does this thing get completely disrupted in the next 30 years with Bitcoin? So I'm going to go to a tweet that I wrote. Um, and uh, we can talk a little bit about that. Uh, let's go to this tweet. Oh, sorry, that's my Bitcoin price. Um, let's go to this tweet. Uh, one second. Here, here's my tweet. All right, sorry about that. Uh, before I do that, though, I want to, I want you guys to hit the subscribe button on YouTube. This is the only way I can get subscribers. I have to literally tell you guys to hit subscribe. Um, why do I need subscribers? Because that gets me great guests. It increases my reach on YouTube. That increases my SEO and everything else. So hit subscribe on YouTube. If you're watching this on X, I'd like you to go to YouTube and find me on YouTube. It's very easy to do. Dot Kruger, Fred Kruger's YouTube. Just do a bunch of searches. You'll find me. And hit subscribe because that'll, that'll help me out. Okay. Uh, now let's go back to my... Uh, Tweet storm. So here we go, and we can you can sort of follow along with me, and uh, and we can sort of think through this thing. So I think we have to think of Bitcoin as really something that is a you know once in a in a lifetime or once in multi generation uh, kind of uh, innovation. It's like electricity. It's like um, the internet. It's something really enormous, and it's going to have some major, major impact, a lot more than just a small impact. People are going to have 2% of their... No, it's going to be much bigger than that. So the my first prediction is, and I really urge you to think about this, I think that the unit of account for all transactions will be Bitcoin. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that when you go to buy an espresso, that espresso is going to be priced in sats. When you go to take out a, a loan for a mortgage for a, a house, that mortgage will be priced in sats. Your salary, if you have a job, you will be getting a certain amount of satoshis per month or per every two weeks. So I think the number one most important thing is that the unit of account is going to move from dollars, yen, won, and euro to sets. And I think that's going to happen over the next 30 years. I think we are going to replace these obsolete currencies with the new world currency, which is going to be Bitcoin. Now, having grown up in Europe, I can tell you that I remember French francs. We actually had two versions of the French franc. We had the old French franc and the new French franc. And both of them were eventually replaced with the euro, as was the Dutch guilder, uh, and, and other currencies, the peseta, the um, Italian uh, uh, lira, they were all replaced. Okay, so um, what do I think this new unit of currency, it'll be called Bitcoin, but you know, underneath it, it's not going to be strictly on-chain Bitcoin. It could be Bitcoin, I'll just call it Bitcoin units. Um, and... You know, the systems won't care if you have actual on-chain Bitcoin, Lightning, um, or some form of custodial Bitcoin like exists in Cash App or Coinbase today. You will be able to 
bring your card, use Apple Pay, do use Google Pay, whatever you want to do, and you will be able to transmit those Satoshis to a vendor. Um, and that's the first thing. I think, but I think the most important thing here is really think through the idea that the unit of account is going to be Bitcoin. I think that's more important than thinking through the, but Fred, Bitcoin can only do this. The unit of account is Bitcoin. Prediction number two. What if you want to borrow, have Bitcoin and you need to borrow Bitcoin? How's that going to work? Well, it's going to be done in Bitcoin for Bitcoin. So let's say, for example, I need to borrow um, $100,000 to remodel my house because somebody was asking this. How, how am I going to do that? Well, right now today, 100000 is about one Bitcoin. So I basically would borrow one Bitcoin and I might have uh, two years to pay back 1.2 Bitcoin. Uh, so the amount, the thing you're borrowing is going to be Bitcoin. The interest is going to be paid in Bitcoin. Uh, who's going to lend you that? Well, somebody with some Bitcoin is going to lend you that. It doesn't have to be fractional. It's not going to be fractional lending. It's going to be somebody with one Bitcoin who wants to turn that one Bitcoin into 1.2 Bitcoin. Perhaps somebody like me who wants to increase their Bitcoin. So now, if you start thinking about that, you're like, well, wait a second. If everybody saves their Bitcoin, nobody will want to lend their Bitcoin. Well, that's not true. People are going to spend their Bitcoin. It's going to be spent every single day because that's what we do. We consume. We, we, we evolve. Things move through the system. Um, and as Bitcoin is spent, the places that it gets spent more efficiently and the places that increases in value will get loans in Bitcoin. So it's a very, it's a, it's a very different uh, paradigm than where we are now, but it completely can work. There's no reason why it can't work. So prediction number two, all the loans will be done in Bitcoin and no fractional r r lending. Prediction number three, there will be no Federal Reserve. Well, the reason we have a Federal Reserve, which was established in 1913, was that banks went out of business and they needed this centralized backstop. We won't need that anymore. These entities will only lend what they have. Now, those entities will have stakeholders, and most likely those will be, uh, stakeholders will be managed with some form of token, tokenship, token ownership. And if there are losses, they will be socialized among those stakeholders. So again, no need for a no need for a systemic lender of last resort. It just will not be needed. And you know, for most of banking history, there was no such thing. We just had one for the last happened to have one for the last hundred and twenty ten years. Prediction number four: There will not be any banks in today's sense. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean that um, today's banks have these lines with the Fed, they're regulated, they, you know, they're, they're, they're not particularly doing that much loaning. What they do is they borrow from, they borrow from the Fed and they invest in treasury bills. So they're just sort of parasitical operations uh, and those kind of things will not exist anymore. Um, and neither will their regulators, the FDIC or the, F, or the Fed. Uh, people who want to lend Bitcoin, like Fred Kroger, will be able to lend Bitcoin. There will not be any choke point 3, 2.0, 3.0, et cetera. There won't, we won't need these bank, bank branches, branches in today's sense, none of that. Uh, what we are going to have a lot of is a lot of AI. And so if you want to move value into the system, which is Bitcoin, value out of the system, if you want to do a loan, if you want to increase, get a Bitcoin mortgage, all that will mainly go through AI, not through these random people trying to sell you stagecoach uh, checks or Disney checks or whatever. Uh, so I think if you think through that, you realize that it really, um, we really have to go, right? We really have to 
kind of move on to the next phase. Um, so let's go to the number five. And I'm sort of put the uh, I put the tweet down so we can just uh, focus on this. Prediction number five is that most people are simply going to save in Bitcoin. So right now, as Safe Dean said, you know you we're forced into all this complex investment decisions. And that means that we're going to have advisors to help us make these investment decisions. How do we fight inflation? Well, we won't have to. Most people just save in Bitcoin. Bitcoin's going to go up very slowly and steadily versus everything. And it won't be, it'll be very different as, as far as an experience from today's Bitcoin, which is kind of this roller coaster. In the future, Bitcoin is going to be most stable thing you ever have. And so I think Bitcoin will be like, you know, the old uh, annuities or treasury bonds. You know, when I started trading, those things were like paying 8%. And I think Bitcoin is going to be very, very safe, very boring, potentially even. But that's where most people are going to save their money. And the last prediction is financial advisors are going to have to find other jobs. What do I mean by that? Well, we have all these people right now sitting around telling you you need to go 60-40 or 65-35 or you need to put a little bit of this, you need to tweak this. And all these people are completely and utterly useless. So they're going to have to find other jobs. Um, the system is going to get much, much more simplified uh, and, and it's going to be much better. So anyways, that's my prediction for hyper-Bitcoinization. Unfortunately, I don't think it's happening for another 20 to 30 years, uh, so somewhere in that kind of time frame. So, you know, in the interim, Bitcoin is going to appreciate probably 100x. So we are going to have this completely crazy and super, super um, profitable uh, phase for everybody to invest in Bitcoin. And once we hit that sort of hyper Bitcoinization point, it's going to get very boring and and it's going to simplify everything. So that's my prediction for the future. Uh, love to get your comments. And again, do me a favor, humor an old man. Hit subscribe. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Bye.